All right, everyone, the British media has invented another Newspeak label as something straight out of 1984 to describe online commentators who are independent and who have their own voices and who don't tone themselves down because other people are trying to shame them and shun them. Uh, namely, they, they have free speech extremists. Now, they're using this label for Paul Joseph Watson, Sargon of Akkad, and Count Dankula because all of them joined, remember, they joined UKIP. It's in the context that I think that they're terrified that enough independent voices will join, you know, some third party effort there. Uh, you know, I know third party that doesn't really apply. Okay, second tier party uh, in the UK, reinvigorate it, give a youth appeal, or here. There's a reason why Jill Stein immediately became a target in the wake of, of the uh, SCOTUS stuff. There's a, there was a totally opportunistic attack by the Democratic Party to keep younger, more liberal people from jettisoning themselves from the ineffectual Democrats, from, from identifying the real problem, which is the Democrats have such shitty leadership and shitty ideas that are so badly outdated, they can no longer compete with the Republican Party, therefore the Democrats need to be fundamentally overhauled from within, or they need to be allowed to, to collapse into the dustbin of history and be replaced. And they, I guess they're worried that the Green Party is going to grab up 10 million young, uh, socialistically minded people, become a mainline party, and leave the Democrats hemorrhaging support to the Republicans, giving them a majority for the next couple of decades. Uh, here's what I would say. There's no such thing as a free speech extremist. There are simply people who believe that you should be able to say what you wish to say if there is no victim created. And the concept that it, someone's offended, therefore they're a victim. No, they're not. They're not being forced to watch your material. No one's forced to subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. No one's forced, forced to watch Infowars. You're not forced to go on the thinkery and listen to Sargon as he plays a fucking video game. Count Dankula doesn't force you to read his tweets. Therein lies the difference. Compulsion. Here is the fundamental difference between people who believe in free speech and all of these egghead journos in the corporate media, and in the UK, of course, government co-opted media, because you actually, you're, you're paying for propaganda uh, in the UK because of the existence of the BBC. Like, you pay for your TV license even if you don't have a boob tube. It's like, I don't have a TV, but I still got to pay a TV license just in case I might see BBC on the street, uh, you know, in a shop window or something. I guess that's the way that it works over there. It's very surreal, very odd. Here's the thing. It's about compulsion. The alt media and f voices for free speech, libertarian voices, new right voices, you know, I'd say some parts of the progressive movement at this point, don't want people to be compelled to have certain beliefs, absorb certain material, or be prevented, compelled not to say certain things, unless there is a compelling reason that that regulation should exist. Defamation, it's fairly long-standing. In the old days, they used to declare a, a pistol duel and gun you down if you defame them. Oh, yo, he's saying that I committed adultery and I didn't. I challenge you to a duel. If you don't accept you're a coward, basically you're saying you're wrong and you apologize. Otherwise, if you're going to stick to your guns, you're giving me the opportunity to put a musket ball through your neck. Uh, uh, you know, credible threat of violence, incitement, things like a copyright infringement. Those are one thing. But if there is no actual victim, there's no compulsion to absorb that material. If you're simply saying you're offended at something, turn it off. You know, the left used to say this as a song called I Was Raped by the FCC by Cheap Sex from back in the Bush era that basically spells it out. I think that should, they should remake that song, only they should uh, replace it with the Democrats instead of Bush trying to uh, suppress everything. Now it's the Democrats. The Republicans aren't busy going around attempting to censor everything over in the UK. Uh, why wouldn't they join UKIP? UKIP was sort of just a Brexit party. Those, the basic fundamental platform was we want out of the EU. We can talk about everything else later. Now that the Brexit has happened, UKIP has become, the government is dragging its heels and, and shitting on things with Brexit, number one, and number two has become authoritarian. It's sort of becoming, I, I would argue, a vaguely left-wing libertarian party within the UK. I think that the establishment there is terrified that people with massive audiences like Paul Joseph Watson, Sargon of Akkad, and Count Dankula will invigorate that movement and increase their vote share just enough for it to actually have representation, thus forcing their hand on Brexit, forcing their hand on censorship, forcing their hand on the migrant crisis and a million other things. Because apparently in the UK it seems that a fairly minor political movement with not that much support can accomplish great things. We saw that here. Libertarian Party, you know, failed to crack 10% in most states. 
although it did him better than it has in, in any other election, I believe. Uh, but it still accomplished great things, got on all sorts of ballots, and is now awash in cash it didn't have before. Thus can field more candidates, can get ballot access, perhaps debate access in more cases, and is becoming, uh, possibly over time, a mainline party. Part of this is due with uh, people being pissed off at the whole damn thing as far as DC goes. But calling people free speech extremists for happening to believe you should not be thrown in jail for being mildly offensive, that's newspeak nonsense. That's called 1984. Like, when I look at the UK, that's exactly the sort of thing I don't want to replicate here. Like, that's the template for everything we should avoid in the United States. We should avoid imprisoning people for speech. Uh, we should avoid disarming people. We should avoid taking part in post-nationalism, in globalism, which is what the European Union experiment was. And I do say was, because it's fucking falling apart. Italy's threatening to veto everything Merkel does now. Thank goodness for the Italians and the Polish over there. They might save all of Europe. It'd be hilarious. Oh yeah, remember, World War III was uh, one without a shot because the Italian government, the Polish government, and some Hungarians got together and stood in the way of the Germans. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, you can't write better jokes than the European Union. Uh, it is a joke. It's the world's biggest joke at this point. It's a joke that it still exists. Just a pile of censorship and bullshit. The UK government, though, now is technically sovereign, and they're still engaging in the same stupid behavior. Oh, we, we, we've got to uh, throw this person in jail because they've been naughty. They have the wrong views. They recorded outside of a trial venue. They, they said a, a racial slur. We're going to fine them $10,000. It's, it's nuts. Nobody is forcing you to go to their YouTube channels and Twitter handles and absorb their material. If you know that you get offended by something, you should avoid it. Otherwise, you are being juvenile and stupid. You are the problem, not the content creator. They're not the problem. They're just creating material. It's like, you know, some people, like, look at people on the right. A lot of them really hate rap music. They're like, oh, it's degenerate. Don't listen to it then. Fucking don't tune into channels that have it on. You know, vote with your feet, so to speak, or vote with your fingers on the dial. Don't listen to it. You know, fucking uh, plug your phone in with all your white nationalist music if you get offended by hearing black people or something. It's called being mature. <laughs> it's just the way that things work. The left doesn't understand. There's more people on the right get it than people on the left. Um, you know, including uh, people like Sargon, who is basically a classical liberal. Uh, I would say at this point, that puts him more in the camp of people who are further right than it does, you know, people who are supposedly liberals in name at least. They're a bunch of authoritarians. Meanwhile, you know, the new right's like, no, we don't want to censor people and go to war. And it's like hilarious. It's like, and I never would have seen this coming because you got to understand, as, as a kid of the Bush era, the Republicans, the right wing, the, the, the Blairites, they were the ones causing all the problems. They were the ones causing wars and telling people, if you don't like Jesus enough, you're not patriotic and we're going to spy on you. And, you know, you're dirt basically because you're, you know, you're a bad person. You have the wrong views. We're going to censor radio within the wake of 9-11. It was quite frequent. We're going to censor TV. Uh, we're going to lean on people. I remember when Animal Farm uh, came out, the movie that is. They leaned on them to uh, whitewash the movie in order to not piss off the, the burgeoning Russian state. Did you know that? A lot of people don't. There was a write-up of it uh, that was mentioned in one of Mad Magazine's editions. It's how I know that, because uh, apparently uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, cartoonist that does Spy vs. Spy was weighing in on how that was dirty and, and basically fucked up, and how they toyed around with culture. Uh, because the cartoon for the original cover, the expose on the story, featured Spy vs. Spy. Sort of a symbol of the USSR-US you know, interlocking relationship of the Cold War. Uh, and, and, and it's like everything's dystopian now. It's like people don't even want to hear the truth. Those who tell the truth are demonized. You know, so, so Count Dankula, whose great crime, what's his fucking crime? He taught his pug how to do a, a Hitler salute. Okay, it's the worst crime in the world. It's so much worse than bombing civilians in Yemen. It's so much worse than allowing famines in Africa by giving them continuous aid and suppressing their economies in a eugenicist plan to destroy them. It's so much worse than the fact that socialists in Venezuela are killing thousands of people every day and making millions flee the country. It's so much worse than systemic government corruption worldwide in literally every regime that governs mankind. It's so much worse than epidemics and it's so much worse than nuclear proliferation nazi pug worst thing ever sargon of a cod uh, on took an unedited video clip from another youtuber 
It's terrible. Horrible. Paul Joseph Watson said something about the Illuminati. Oh my god. The weird side of YouTube is literally Hitler now. I don't get it. I just don't get these people. I don't get why anyone takes them serious. I, I see occasionally. It's sporadic, certainly. I still see people occasionally defending like the British government censorship system or, or, or Merkel or something. What are you thinking? Why? Why? Are you a slave or you want to be, uh, you want to be able to say what you want to say? Irrespective of if someone else gets offended, I'll tell these soccer moms something. What if people start getting offended at your beliefs? Are you going to shut up about them or are you going to get thrown in prison or something? Get called a Nazi for your beliefs? Yeah, I think that you probably uh, fall under that ladder camp. I think you're steadily marching towards something very dark that we've done before in human history and it's never gone well. That's about all. Peace out.